Okay guys, here we are now. I'm uh, going to start looking at the building of the main frame. Some of this stuff is already pre-assembled in the factory, like here, step number 17. This bag, it's, uh, I think the battery tray is what this is. Uh, it's all about screwing this flat head screw into uh, that part that's ready to go, already done. Step 18 and 19 is just putting the bearings into these head blocks. That's already done in the factory as well. So you're going to move on to step number 20. We've got some parts here now. So this is the servo mounting tray. Looks like it's symmetrical. So we've also got these brackets and these little plastic ball ends. It's kind of an old school way of doing things. Uh, so we've got all these pieces. Uh, it looks like these screws. What we're going to do is take our cyclic servos, uh, put those in here with the mechanical part facing up away from this lip here. So this is the top of it, the way we've got it. Uh, these screws are going to go into these little spacers first and then in through the servos and then the back of those we're going to have these little plastic ball ends and we're going to screw those in there. So we're going to put these servos together, get that ready to go and we'll show you this assembly once it's done and ready to go. Right here we are, we've got that part finished, we've got these parts finished, and we've got the servos in this guy. Uh, the servos that I had had the hole in the middle, so instead of going through the screws and going through those two into these guys in the back, I uh, just did the single screw in through the middle and into just one of these in the back. You can see there's still two of them. It's nice and tight. It's nice and sturdy, it's not moving, not going anywhere. Micro servos, you can do just fine with one screw. So, in my case, one screw, you guys might have two screws depending on the servos that you get. Uh, but here is the finished product for that step. And for the next step, number 21 and 22, it looks like we're going to be taking the servo horns and putting some uh, carbon fiber reinforcements on there. Uh, so I like the idea of that. Uh, we don't just have to depend on the plastic. So we'll put those on there, get those all set. Looks like we're going to be screwing the balls into the side of the servo horn that goes into the servo. So it's going to, the ball is actually going to be facing here towards the body of the servo. So we'll put those together, show you that. Okay, and here we are with the next step finished up. Uh, we've got the arms ready to go. And what I found was that these servo arms that came with my BS92A servos actually had this, they weren't flat. They have a, a bit of a lip where it's thicker here towards the center and then thinner here towards the outside. So you have the option of just using the servo horn as it is. It looks like a lot of guys are doing that and having no problems. These are actually pretty tough. What I did is I took my Dremel and I chiseled off this extra thick part here towards the center so I made sure it was just flat and then after I did that I put the bracket on there and you can see the finished product here it's nice and flat uh, with the carbon fiber frame and then cut off the extra pieces around there so that way I, you know I feel I've got a lot more strength in that I've got the carbon fiber adding strength to it put the screw on here, put some thread lock, some blue thread lock in there and I think this is going to be nice and strong, it's going to hold up just make sure you don't be lazy and like try to put the carbon fiber flat piece over here and then you've got the gap and you screw that in and it's not screwed in completely and then you've got tension on those don't do that, so either screw this way or just use the servo horn as it is or if you can find some servo horns that are flat the way they are uh, that work for your servos, you can do that too, you know, uh, but this is what I dealt with Screwed those down and clipped the sides Also the holes I found it was the hole towards the end 
and these holes were actually pretty small so I couldn't get these uh, little screws in there the way I wanted to so what I did was in the bag there's the self tapping screw oh not this one so the, here we go going right here this bigger self tapping screw so what I did with that was I went in here and then used a screwdriver and drilled that through and that kind of opened the hole up a little bit just did it nice and slow and then went in there put some pressure on and got this screwdriver in there got that to go through and then with that being flat took the little black uh, nut and put that on the other side and that's how we ended up getting three of these really nice strong servo arms where remember flat uh, so make sure you take the time to do that right if in doubt just use the servo arms that came with your uh, servos those sh should be strong enough so all right moving on to the next step we're going to get the servo arm set up for the tail servo uh, so we'll use these other parts follow the next step here on the manual and show you that when it's all done Okay, and here we are with this uh, tail servo horn ready to go. Uh, washer, 10 millimeter screw. Uh, put it through the washer first. Um, have that ready. You want to put the ball link onto the ball end first. Uh, just clip that on with your pliers. It's this one's really tight. Um, clipped it on to the ball first, and then put the screw through the washer, and then through that whole thing, and then screwed it in little pressure put the little nut on the end um, I need to find my ball link uh, reamers and actually loosen this up this is way too tight so I'm gonna get in there and loosen that up uh, but for demonstration purposes pretty simple quick and easy uh, so we'll move on to the next step alright now moving on here to step 23 we're making the belt tensioner looks like it's got everything to keep the belt uh, at the right tension and it looks like it's got pulleys here uh, which it looks like the belt will probably route through here and here as it goes in uh, so pay attention to the diagrams here make sure you're measuring these looks like there's a whole lot of these washers here 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 uh, looks like all the flange bearings are already inserted in there so you've uh, you don't have to do that part. Also, don't over tighten this screw into this bolt. You're going to want these loose enough so that there's some play so that uh, the belts can run through nice and smooth. And also, don't over tighten this one here, number four. Uh, so, just pay close attention. They try to guide you through it. Uh, read through here, it'll show all the parts and kind of talk about uh, how to do it, but it's kind of you know it's translated from another language so it only makes so much sense uh, so we will pull out bag number 23 here pretty simple it's got all the parts in there uh, you can see that those bearings are already inserted but there's a whole bunch of those little washers in there make sure you don't lose any of those when you open it up uh, so just take your time cut it lay everything down count all the bearings and just line it up the same way it is here in the picture just the exact same way it is here and then put all the pieces together and, uh, and then you'll be good to go so I'll show you that uh, when it's all done okay getting a little closer up on this one shows exactly the order that we have everything right here we've got the long screw one of the spacers the bigger pulley two of these, remember two of these spacers in this part not just one, two of them that's going to go in here, this part the, op the side where the bearing goes in is going to be facing the side of the bigger pulley this isn't symmetrical so make sure that you're that this is facing the correct direction we're going to have one of these spacers in between these guys there's spacers inside of here, these are pre-built in the factory, longer one in here spacers out here 
the screw through these and then the locking nylon nut right there. Uh, so this is how it's laid out in the manual. Just make sure you put this together correctly. Two of them here and that this is facing the correct direction. Don't over tighten and uh, use thread lock where you're going into the threads. I recommend put the bolt through and then just get a little thread lock on the end of there and make sure it's clean so it doesn't get any of in any of these bearings and gum things up and make sure everything's loose enough and that it moves all nice and smooth. Okay so here's the belt tensioner. Uh, pretty simple. Everything moves nice and smooth. Don't over tighten this. So get this to where it's tight and then just back it out just a little bit. I don't really have any play on these. Like maybe just a little bit, but so it's nice and smooth. You don't have to worry about this nylon lock coming out. Uh, thread through here first on this side. Uh, get through the the washer spacer. Get through the pulley, then get through the other washer, and then put a little bit of blue thread lock on the tip, just the tip, just for a second. And then uh, once it goes through on the other side, I put a little bit of blue on the top here just to make sure it stays. And again, don't over tighten that. Make sure that this pulley is moving nice and smooth. Uh, so that's that part, and we'll get ready to move on to the next step, uh, number 24. Okay, now that we're done with part 24, moving on to, or to part 23, moving on to 24, tail control rod here looks like it's pre assembled by the factory. And as you can see, this is it right here the tail control rod. Uh, it was about putting these linkage ends in it. Uh, so that's all set. There is a bag here for step 24. We're not going to put these ball links on yet. And these sheaths basically go on to the, the linkage rod first. Then you put the ball links on and then you put them over, kind of like heat shrink. Uh, so we're going to put all of that stuff off to the side. And then the next step after that, you can see here the details of putting that together. Uh, part 25, also pre-assembled by the factory. This auto rotation hub, which is right here in a bag of its own. So we'll check that out. Looks like it's all set to go and ready to put to the side and uh, put into the full assembly later and we will move on to the next step it looks like 26 the main pulley this one's not pre-assembled in the factory uh, so we're gonna pull out the bag for that and it looks like we've got a lot of screws to put through so uh, all the screws one side the other side and then the other side looks like the protruding edges are thick longer on one side than on the other so we'll put that together and it looks like we're going into yeah, some metal lock nuts or those aren't lock nuts so we're going to use blue thread lock on the ends to make sure that this whole thing holds together so we will put this bag together see if these two ends are are the same or not and uh, take a look at that stuff and then we'll show you this when it's all done and ready to go. Alright, end of step 26 here. Uh, these white uh, outer parts are completely symmetrical. They're exactly the same. They've even got the same uh, cuttings for the hex bolts. So it really doesn't matter which side you use on which one. Uh, in the picture, the smooth side of the gear was the side that the screws went in. I don't know if it even really matters, but I just did it that way just to make sure. Uh, so this is the end of that step. Little thread lock on the ends. Uh, the first two I, I, I put through. I tried to get four of them, get thread lock in there, then get the white part in, and then screw the screws on. The rest of them I put uh, thread lock on before putting them through. And then afterwards I went through with a little uh, dabber, put some blue thread lock on each of these just to make sure that they're going to stay together. Uh, so that's the end of that part. Looks like for step number 26, in the same bag that we had this stuff, we've got this gear. And 
we still got three of these little two by six millimeter screws and we also have this from step 25 uh, so we're going to be putting this through here with the long part going into the side that has the grooves not the smooth side so it's going to be going in like that and then on this side we're going to line up the holes and put these screws through and thread them into this guy so it's going to be like that make sure you use thread lock and make sure actually yeah like this and make sure you're going into the correct side of this main gear that has these grooves on the top so we'll show you that here when it's all finished up okay and here is the end of step 27 all finished up uh, this part slides out so make sure you don't end up dropping that and losing it uh, so this metal part you've pushed in through the side where the grooves are make sure these line up you might even want to push it in to snap it in a little bit uh, but either way by the time you tighten these make sure these are all the way through and that those ends are basically flush against each other so we've got that the shaft goes through on the same end where this bigger metal metal uh, not metal uh, this belt gear right here on the bottom is so that's the finished product for that step all ready to go and we'll put that to the side and now we're going to move on to step number 28 the motor mount so we'll pull all the parts out there we'll look what we've got going on in the manual we're using our scorpion 2520 this thing's going to be a powerhouse so it'll be really nice on six cell. So here's what we got there. Yeah, the HK2520 1360KV. So, and uh, the pinion is included in the box. It's actually included here in this step. So we are good to go on that. So we'll get this set up, set up uh, show you the manual if we have to, and all the individual parts, and uh, come right back once that's all set up. Okay, and now on to the next step here with the motor mount. Uh, we're just going to, as always, make sure everything's lined up to look exactly the same as the picture. I'm going to have it so the wires are coming out this way. The motor goes on the back, and these forks go forward, and there's going to be a lot of electronics here. We don't want the motors to be poking into those, so... Wires are probably going to come out this direction and then route around to the front where the ESC is. So make sure the motor wires face out towards uh, this direction, not towards where the two uh, prongs are sticking out. So we're going to put the motor mount on there. We want to make sure that this motor shaft is as, as close to the center of this hole as possible. So we're going to put that in there, get the screws started, and then we have this centering tool which we're going to push onto that. And then you push that and that should center the shaft and then you tighten these screws and then after that you put the pinion on or the motor pulley whatever you want to call it and you put that on there and then there's going to be about 0.5 millimeters so not much distance at all between this mount and this once you put it on so all those parts we have out here ready to go we've got the mount, we've got the two screws uh, I've already cleaned those off, got any grease off of those Here's the centering tool, pretty simple. I've got this little grommet screw, clean that off, and our pinion. Uh, so just like I described it, put that on there, use the centering tool, tighten these guys, put this guy on, make sure there's 0.5 millimeters between that and this, and then use the grub screw to screw it on here. It looks like my shaft doesn't have an indent, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get it all set up, ready to go, line everything up, uh, figure out where the hole is going to be for this pinion. Uh, put a little mark inside there and then take it apart. Put just a little bit of an indent, a groove here on the main shaft uh, so it grabs really well and I don't have this grub screw backing out and then uh, losing power while I'm flying. Uh, and also, if you do end up doing that, making a little indent so you can get the pinion on there nice and tight 
make sure you just put this in a bag and uh, just stick the shaft of the motor out so that none of the metal filings get into the motor because uh, that can cause it to pull more power and maybe lock up and maybe even burn up your ESC. So we're going to do that, get the whole motor mount ready and all set and then we'll show you that when it's all done. Alright, and here it is, the motor mount completely finished up and ready to go. Got these screws tightened, used medium thread lock of course on those. Very, 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 very tiny gap between the mount and the pinion. I cracked it open, put a little uh, indent on my shaft, still got some sticking out. Hopefully that won't be a problem, maybe it's going into a bearing, I haven't really looked into that part yet. Uh, wires are facing this direction and that's all ready to go. Next part we're moving on to after that. Got the computer here with the manual. We're going to start one side of the frame. It's the left side of the frame and it looks like we're going to be mounting our tail servo in the meantime. The bag that has steps 29, 30, 31 has all of this hardware in it uh, and this stuff. Uh, really easy to find. Same sort of mounts. Uh, look at the correct sizes here. It looks like, let's see, that number five is a 2 by 8 millimeter screw. So grab those 2 by 8 millimeters, put them in there. Uh, three. is a 2 by 6. So we will put that together as far as which side of the frame to use. Okay, and for the frame, uh, we're going to grab the one for the left side. It's going to be the one with the smaller mount for the servo. Uh, and if you've got a micro-sized servo, you are going to mount that during this step. If you have a mini-sized servo, you're going to mount that during the next step on the right side of the frame. Uh, so I've got a mini servo, so I'm going to do it on the next step. Uh, so here I'm just going to put the canopy mount on like it is in the manual and then on the right side basically same thing we put the canopy mount on and we're going to put the servo on that side on the inside with the me mechanical part uh, facing towards the back. So that is the frame. We will show you uh, the, these next steps uh, left and right side of the frame once those are are ready to go and we'll move on to the steps after that. Alright, and here are the frames. We've got the left side, got the canopy mount on there, and we've got the servo here on the right side. Looks like there's some longer screws that you should be able to use and some uh, locking nuts in here for the back. So uh, that's all ready to go. We've got the two sides of the frame. It's going to look like this, looking from the back here. Uh, so now it's time to move on to the next part. Now progressing to the next step here, we put the elevator servo on. So this is the left side of the frame. We've got the right side right here with the micro tail servo. So this is going to have the elevator servo. Basically all the mechanics are going to be facing to the right if you're looking from the back and it's going to be at the inside of the helicopter uh, when it's all said and done. There's these spacers that you'll find. So you're going to go through these spacers. Again, these servos only have one hole, so I went through the one and use these plastic nuts here on the end. Went from the back. Uh, this was actually kind of a pain here because the screw was right underneath the servo wire. So what I did was just barely got in the top one and then made sure I got in the bottom one first and then got the top one tightened because then with the top one being more loose you can kind of move it around a little bit more uh, lift up this these wires and get underneath there so uh, that's nice and solid on the frame and uh, that's all good to go we've got all of our servos mounted and now we'll be moving on to step number 23 which is the battery tray mount here is the bag for that uh, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 there's a couple steps in here. Uh, we'll be going through, putting all that together. 
So the way we'll be lining it up actually will uh, hold this left side of the frame basically how we've been uh, looking at it so far. This goes this way and it's going to line up here and there's this there's the holes on the other side here that you'll be lining up. Actually you can see there's you'll find that there's lips it'll actually line up with so that's perfect so since it's got little lips you'll be able to line those holes up pretty easily and then the provided screws of course you're going to be uh, using those it looks like there's the smaller thicker ones are the ones that go into into this so we'll show you that when it's all all put together now we've got this battery mount tray on here uh, we're going into plastic so I use some CA a little bit of glue on the threading before I got them in there and you know don't over tighten it because you're going into plastic just get it nice and tight with two fingers and then you're good to go on there uh, that's nice and solid next part we're going to move on to is basically we've just got the hardware in the bag the two longer screws there's some two by eight millimeter those you're going to use to put this belt tensioner on here and the belt tensioner again we're building on to the left side of the frame you're going to take this and the largest one is going to go in this top hole right here like that be sticking out the side of the frame so you're going to line up those holes right there screw it together don't over tighten it because uh, we'll probably, probably tighten those later because there's some slides here probably have to adjust it and make sure you go through this little carbon fiber piece that they provide so screws through the carbon fiber piece and then in through here and then this guy in here like that and then after that we're going to put the top mounting block in the side where the flange bearing goes in is towards the top open part is going to go towards the inside and that lines up here on the top side of the left frame there's some holes you can see here and here so we're going to line those up and we're using the 2 by 6 millimeter and then with the other bearing block the part where the flange goes in with the larger diameter right here is going to be facing down so we're going to take that flip it line that up with the holes here and then again use the 2 by 6 millimeter to screw those in uh, we're also not going to get those too tight um, I like to make adjustments once we've got the whole frame together make sure that the main shaft slides nice and smooth and then tighten those uh, to make sure there's no stress on the bearings so we're going to put all these uh, the belt tensioner and the two bearing blocks on here uh, with all these parts that we've got remember the two longer screws are for the belt tensioner and then we'll show you that part of uh, the step when it's all finished uh, so we're remember building on the left side of the frame the whole time so we can still keep this right side off to the side so come show you that when it's all done and ready to go now here we are with the belt tensioner and the head blocks on right here uh, it's still pretty loose we've got the little carbon fiber material it says don't use thread lock on these ones so don't use thread lock on that you can use thread lock on these top ones uh, so flange bearing facing up um, I haven't tightened these too much they're just a little bit loose uh, you can get, get a little bit of wiggle room in there um, later like I said we'll put the main shaft through and then tighten everything really good so that's that uh, opening or the flange bearing is facing down facing up so make sure that's the way it is uh, you have these screws here uh, you might notice they're not on the other side so make sure that those little uh, holes for those screws are facing forward for the next step we're going to use these four remaining screws that we have in that hardware and we're going to put these servos here so we're going to line up those holes on the carbon fiber plate with those holes on these mounts and then screw those together and again we're not going to over tighten them um, we'll have the main shaft through everything when we get everything nice and tight uh, so uh, we'll show you that when it's all ready to go and then uh, then probably time to put the main shaft on and then get everything tightened up and move on to the step after that so uh, we'll be right back to show you uh, this guy mounted on this side of the frame 
Okay, and here we are with the servos on here. Again, not overly tightened, a little bit of thread lock. Uh, those are mounted, mechanical parts facing up. Elevator servo, you will notice all the, mecha the mechanical rotating arm is facing down. I'm sure it's just going to be a difference in length of the uh, ball links. And we also put this uh, frame mount in right here. Uh, frame stabilizer. Another 2x6 millimeter. That came in the bag here, number 37, 38, 39. Uh, we'll use this carbon piece for the motor mount. Had some hardware in there for all of this. Uh, so there it is with that part. Next step looks like putting the motor on, which, okay, from the rear is going to be facing like this. So these two slots that are uh, long so that you can adjust probably your, your your gear mesh so you're gonna line up oh okay it looks like we're going to put this shaft through this bearing like that and then as we push that through then this whole uh, setup will move forward and back okay and yeah, make sure we use this carbon fiber piece over that um, uh, before we put the screws through to put the motor mount on. So we'll get all of that done and show you that when it's all done and ready to go. Okay, looking at the manual again, looks like I got a little ahead of myself there. We're not going to put the motor mount on just yet. It says that we put this on first. You could actually probably put the motor on first and then this, but the way it says in the manual, we're putting this on first uh, with some more of these 2 by 6 millimeter screws. Uh, so these holes are going to be facing forward. So it'll be like so. Uh, line up these brackets with the holes. Uh, use thread lock because you're going into metal and put all that together. And since we're doing that and basically making these screws a little more difficult to access, a little inaccessible, this is when it'd be a good time to grab the main shaft, put that through the top, through the bottom, make sure it's moving nice and smooth, tighten, you've got these basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, and just go around and tighten those in a star pattern, make sure each time that you don't cause the motor to stop moving smoothly through uh, that whole set of, of bearings. You want that shaft to move nice and smooth. So we'll go back, we'll do that, get these all nice and tight, show that the shaft is still moving smooth. Then we're going to put this piece on and then we'll move to the motor mount and show you all of that when it's done and ready to go. Alright, now moving right along. Uh, I've tightened all of these eight screws around the two uh, main bearing blocks here. Uh, and made sure, look at how smooth that whole thing moves. So make sure it moves like that. Uh, what I noticed, what I had to do was as I was tightening these, uh, I had to kind of pinch the ends of these and then tighten all the way around. Uh, so you may have to move one of the blocks, maybe the bottom block, a little up or down, then tighten it. Same with the top. Just make sure it's moving nice and smooth that it can almost fall out under its own weight. So that's ready to go. Um, I'm going to take the main shaft out for now. We're just using that to make sure it was smooth. Uh, so we've got the rest of the frame here. Got this front uh, frame on here, part of the frame. I think electronics mount is what they called it. And we've also got the motor mount. Uh, the long end of the bearing or of, of the shaft came in through this bottom bearing, so it's got extra support. On the other side, we used this special carbon fiber washer. Uh, and these 2 by 8 millimeter screws to go in there. Uh, this whole thing is still loose enough to where it can still move forward and back. So if you shift it like that, you're good to go. So this is uh, this part. Moving on now, it looks like the tail uh, block 
Uh, step 40, 41, we've got these plastic parts in here. Uh, there's parts with little nubs on the end. Those are going to be facing forward. That whole thing, we've got some long screws that go through washers. Line up with these four holes in the back. Uh, nubs face forward. And that's going to be pretty simple and easy. And we'll show you that once we put, put those onto the frame here. Okay, here for the next step, we've got the tail boom mounts on here. We've got the screws through. We haven't put the bolts through. Uh, what we're going to do next now is put the other half of the frame on. So we're going to slap that on here, line everything up, all of the holes. Uh, there's one of these little special washers for this bottom uh, motor mount right here and we also use uh, the 8 millimeter longer screws that we've got right there everything else we've got 6 millimeter screws uh, I don't see that we put the motor mount ones these top ones in yet for this step so you know around here around here uh, for this part on the boom blocks put the frame on then we've got more washers here put the washers through and then the nylon locking nuts and then we're going to tighten all of that. Uh, get everything nice and tight and make sure uh, we're not screwing up the fact that uh, the main shaft moves nice and smooth. So I recommend also putting the main shaft in there. Uh, move that up and down. And uh, as you're tightening all of those bolts, make sure it's all staying nice and smooth. So we'll slap that other half of the frame on here, get that all together, and show you how that looks when it's all done. Alright, and here we are with the, the frame coming together. We've got both sides. Uh, put all the screws, the 2x6, 2x6, these uh, thicker, smaller ones that we had, uh, just like on this side. And we're going into plastic, so again, we use some CA, thread lock going into metal, 2x6, all over here. I use the 2x8 millimeter screws here with the special washer. Uh, I can't really find my special washer for the motor mount, so I'm going to leave those for now. Uh, maybe it'll turn up, or I'll have to use some other washers uh, to get myself by. But this is the end product of that. Now we just need to put the skids on here, so there's another, the next step. There's this bag here. It doesn't seem to have a number on it, but it's got these... Uh, little frame spacers, these mounts that are going to go here uh, for holding on the canopy mount unit and then also the little nuts on the end here that hold the skids in place. So it's kind of an interesting process there. We uh, There's a flat part in the middle of these uh, spacer mounts. Put those in there with the flat spot facing up and that's where you line up the holes for this uh, long canopy mount and uh, there's also little slits in these nuts and you have to have them facing a certain way for putting the skids on so we'll put this hardware on and then we'll put the skids on and then once those are all together it should uh, give you a better idea of how all that stuff works okay now here is a closer look at this assembly here uh, these guys are nice and loose. If you tighten them, it's going to compress that space, and you'll probably have to pry it out a little bit to get the skids in there, so make sure you don't do that. Uh, these are going to be nice and loose here at first. Uh, I screwed through the plastic first and then screwed them in. And then uh, what we're going to do here, notice the, well, the standoffs here and the canopy mount. So we're going to see so this is the front of the helicopter line up these little slots in the skids um, so I'll probably have to take a closer look get in here real nice uh, you line that up right there there we go so that shows how we're going to get those on, slide those in, and then tighten these, and then it will compress on the skids and hold those in place. Uh, so we'll be doing that to both sides here, and we'll come uh, show you how that looks once it's ready to go. And, <laughs> so I mean, I actually just noticed, 
I put my canopy mount backwards. So I'm going to take this, flip it over, <laughs> and then uh, have that face towards the front, not the back. Uh, so we'll have that facing towards the front, and we'll put the skids on, and then we'll show you that once it's all done and ready to go. All right, and here is the frame with the skids fully assembled. Got those on there, slid them into place, uh, and then tightened them. All went pretty smooth and simply. Uh, moved the canopy mount facing forward. So here we go. Here's the main frame of the Warp 360. We've got the servos installed. Uh, everything's looking pretty good. And about ready to move on to the next step. Uh, see what's next on the manual. So there we are.